Welcome to day 1869 of What You Have To Now. Sharon Horn Olson here documenting the journey. Originally in 2018, as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business ownership to the online world, I had gotten divorced, divested myself of all my businesses with my ex-husband and was looking for something new, something exciting, a change. And I decided I'd been curious about the online world and about the internet for you know, since its inception, and I wanted to hop on and figure out what it was all about and how I could learn how to apply the online strategies and techniques and online business and combine them with my offline uh, corporate and manufacturing and 27 different businesses and industries experience to create something new and something different and something that was, you know, unique to me. And I think I'm still working on it, but I, I'm, I'm settling into a rhythm of what works for me nowadays in my life and where I'm at in my life. So today I created two pieces of content. One was for the Get Your Goals Annual Challenge. We're focusing on mental well-being and mental health. We're talking about the conscious mind today. We've got, you know, different levels of consciousness, but we I broke it down. We're just talking about conscious mind, subconscious mind, and super conscious mind one day for each of those. Again, there's lots of different ways you can break it down. Lots of different people and lots of different scientists and lots of different experts like to break it down into Whatever number works for them and for their model, but this is the one I like to use because it's simple, it's easy to understand, and it's easy to remember. So today we focused on and we're talking about our conscious mind, the part of our mind that is conscious. And we actually, only about 10% of our thinking in our mind is conscious. Everything else goes on in our subconscious or other versions of consciousness and levels of consciousness that we're not really consciously aware of. And so we talked about the importance of being consciously aware of the goals, especially with respect to mental well-being and health, because that's what we're talking about this month in terms of how are we going to achieve those goals? How do we set those goals? And then how do we use our subconscious to automatically keep us moving toward those goals and objectives? We have to consciously decide what our framework is and then implant that in our subconscious. It sounds really complicated, but it's super easy. It's not like getting an ICD. But we, we want to do that in order to make... A lot of our goal achievement in all the areas and aspects of our life, but especially in the mental well-being and mental health area of our life, automatic, right? We want to be always, as much as possible, doing things that benefit us in all areas and aspects of our life. But our mental well-being is really, really important with respect to that. So we talked about that. And then our idiom to kind of go inside with that and kind of go along with that was a clean conscience or a clear conscience makes a soft pillow and I grab my little pillow off my bed my little it's actually a Christmas smoshmallow or whatever they're called I don't know what they're called they're a tie thing but they're really uh they're really cozy and good but my granddaughter's got a bunch of them but I scored this cute little one for Christmas and so I like it on my bed because it's kind of fun to just lay on sometimes and I got to thinking about this idiom and this expression it's actually from an old French proverb and it's so true. When we are behaving in ways that are consistent with our core values, being ourselves, etc., it's pretty easy to sleep at night. But when we're not being who we really are, when we're putting on, on veils and masks and all kinds of things and pretending we're something that we're not, it's really, really stressful. Or if we do or say something or if we behave in a way that isn't consistent with what makes us feel good, we, we sometimes lose sleep at night. So I was thinking of all the things that cause me to lose sleep at night. And it's usually related somehow to my conscious isn't clear with respect to a situation or experience or a conversation or something that I had. So talked about that. Uh, and it, to me, I guess that is absolutely true. If we're, if we're true to ourselves, if we're honest and we tell the truth and we're who we really are, we can sleep better at night and we get better sleep at night. doesn't mean there aren't other things that are going to keep us up at night, like newborns, but there's uh, always a way to deal with that as well. So that's it. I'm running late today, hanging out with the two-year-old this morning. And so if I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, have an absolutely awesome day and I will be with you tomorrow and sharing what I'm working on. I'm actually falling a little bit behind on a couple of projects, which I will catch up on, but I wanted to help my daughter with her new baby. So that is what we do. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love being able to spend time with my amazing little granddaughters. All three of them. I have three granddaughters. So I'm super excited. All right. If I can help you ask. Otherwise, have an absolutely awesome day.